I would say there's well over 80. You think that many? Well over. Welcome to the Crime House. Richard Cottingham was a notorious American serial killer active in the early 60s and 70s. He was responsible for the deaths of over 20 young women, which he claims is well over 80. He was better known as the Torso Killer or the Times Square Killer. His criminal activities only came to light in 1979 when he was arrested for the murders of two New Jersey girls. Chilling how he recalls the murders so casually. It's too close to dinner. <laughs> it would be a shame. No, 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 don't eat. Hold on. Cottingham is able to give a detailed description of his movements even many years later. This was possible because he was careful and had a routine he repeated. And when I went in about 40 or 50 feet, the car stopped. I, could, I, I got stuck in the mud. Mm -hmm. So we stayed there about 10, 15 minutes. I was talking. I, I was trying to decide what to do. The cop car came up this way. And then he went by, and then I seen him back up. So I knew he spotted the car in there. So I got out of the car with her, and I ran into the, the woods. I didn't even know where I was going. Now the dogs, there was dogs in these houses, started barking, either from me or the cop car or whatever. So the, all, that's what drift. So now I said, let me go over that way. So I stopped here, and she started screaming. She heard the cop car, and she's screaming. The cops were up there, they couldn't see where the screaming was coming from, but they, they were by that empty car. But we were now 40 or 50 feet into the woods. And the empty car is the victim's car. Right. It's her car. Right. Her car was right around, right around here. 
we're, we're back to back here. I could see the cops because they had flashlights and everything, but they couldn't see me, but they could hear her screaming. So I panicked and I stabbed her. Or I tried to shut her up. And then I took off and I ran behind this house, behind this house, and between these two houses, because the doors were backing from this house, and I came back across here. Now the cops were out here, flashlights then, I ran right, they didn't see me. And I ran this way, so they're thinking I'm still running into the woods, I came back the other way. And when I ran from that second house, ran a, I would say a straight line, maybe it's, you know, a little curved or anything, I almost fell over the well. Okay. So if you get the address of this house, it's directly opposite. It's directly out from the end of the house. It's almost directly opposite, and I would say 150 to 175 yards in. You'd have a yeah. Now there might it looked like there's a whole new house in that development there. Yeah. All right, and and let me just back to this street here. That that the street that the Mon, it's the Montvale ice skating rink that used to be right. on that street. Down down here further. All right, so that's down here for. But you're right. sure you weren't over the New York line yet? No, because my uncle lives up the other way. Remember I took yeah, you up to Rome? He's like Upper Saddle River or something he lived in? Well, that, that is yeah. Upper Saddle River. But, but if you kept going this way, Rockland County is right, right here. Right. But you're sure no. that the ice rink is here, but you were still in Montville. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, I was... This whole area was my killing ground, yeah. if you want to call it that. So I knew the area. And then when I ran, I ran, like I said, I almost tripped over had a big piece of corrugated metal over it. And then I ran out here, and I got back on this road. I ran over through the woods and everything, behind some other houses here, and I ran on this road, and that's how, and I ran, I, got all, I walked all the way back to Westwood. That's why I know, if, if you find out where that, that girl, where they write up the girl, then you get land records, you'll know the exact right, right to the inch where this second house was. Right. Because the houses aren't there no more. Because we weren't by, there were no houses there, I don't think. If I would have seen three houses, I would have said, yeah, this is it. Well, there might yeah. be three houses, but there might be a hundred next to them now. They were old, they were old farmhouses. Okay. Yeah, it's but not, it's if not you the same. get a report to that, and, and they so let, let me backtrack a minute. So, just for the girl that, that, so, you're positive you abducted that girl from the Bergen Mall. That's the mall that you, you kept... <laughs> Well, I can't say that. Okay. I, it was either that, I'm 90% I'm sure it was the Bergen Mall, but it could have been the Garden State Mall. Okay. But it's one of the malls that... Oh, one of those two. Okay. Guaranteed 100%. It was about, uh, it was dark. I would say it was probably about 6.30, 6 o'clock, 6.30. And give me just approximately a year. You, 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 when did you move to Lodi? Ooh, from Lodi? No, to Lodi. So you, at this point, did you still live in Riverdale? No, no, I used to live in Little Ferry. Oh, right, okay. I used to live so in Little Ferry from 1970 to like 73, I think. Okay. And then I moved to Lodi. Prior to 70, where were you living? Riverdale. Right, that's what I thought. So when this happened, though, were you living in Riverdale or I, Little Ferry? I don't remember. Even though Cottingham could remember so many specifics of his crimes, he couldn't keep track of basic information like where he lived at the time. I, I definitely wasn't living in Riverdale. Okay, so then you think it had to be after 1970 then? No, I definitely was Then it would have to be after 1970, the early 70s. Okay. Be, yeah, I never thought of it that way. No, but how, because what I did was, see, one of my... Okay, there's, there's a diner on Route 4. It was, a, it was a pretty famous diner back then and probably still there. Uh, okay, which, 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 the which, diner was near the Bergen Mall? What I did was I parked my car, it's a 24 hour diner, that's where I parked my car. I've done this a couple of times. So my car would be, if, it, if I didn't come back for a day, there's always people coming and going. They never. Then I go in. The diner had. A f I use this. Then I use the next thing here. It's not much of a diner. Yes. 
root four. I I wouldn't be surprised at the at the dino. Does Forest Avenue go right down to Route Four? Mm -hmm. There used to be a diner on the corner of Forest Avenue and Route 4. And the building's still there, but it's not a diner. Anymore. And opposite that diner, if you go across the highway this way... Was there a walkway? Yeah. Yes. It goes over to the building. Very more. Very nice. Darren did very more. Because that's what I did. I parked my car there, and I walked across the thing into the mall. And then I walked around. It is much harder to work on older cases due to the scene changing over time. Buildings can be developed or torn down completely. How did you get her? How did, she, how did you end up getting her back in her car? Anything that helps me? No, she was get into a car and I just pushed my way in. Okay. Cottingham would often leave bodies at the scene of the murder, but travel for distances for others, so it made discovering a pattern much harder. You take, you take her car. Then, yeah. I pushed my way in, I, I handcuffed her, I tied, I didn't handcuff, I tied her up, and then we just drove up the Montvale. Okay, so then once you're up this way, and you're solid, you're rock solid in the Montvale? I'm rock, I'm rock, okay, the only thing I can say, I'm rock, I'm rock solid about this whole thing, and 90% sure that's the intersection. I can't believe there's any other intersection. But when, when we drove... Well, you, you just drew like a little street going this way. There is a particular street that's still there where this comes up. As you go across Chestnut Ridge Road, there's a 45 degree angle going this way. And then the street continues up this way, going towards, going into Upper Saddle River and Route 17. Going towards Route 17. Well, but I don't know if it was like that back then. I, I did this, this, that's the direction where, where my uncle lives. And you know, it's at this intersection here, if I if I made a right turn, that's when we went down to where my uncle lived. Okay. About a mile down there. That's why I knew the area. That's why I'm 90, 90, 95%. That has to be the, the intersection. Okay. It's just that it looks so different now. I mean... But you're positive this is off of Chestnut Ridge Road, which, or off of the street where the, where the Montvale Ice Skating Rink was on. The Montvale Ice Rink was on Chestnut Ridge Road. Almost certain. Okay. You know... You're, you're putting doubts in my head. <laughs> no, I don't want to I, I know you're not, you don't want it, but I, you know. Being uh, a guy from Riverdale, I would think you would know when you were in Montvale. That's why, I just want to be sure. No, not really. Okay. No, but like I said, I went to this place 20 times. Mm -hmm. But I always would come up here and then, see, I could only go during the winter. That's another thing. It had to be a cold month because during the summer, this was all corn. You couldn't drive over. Okay. So in the winter, it was all cut down. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying it could have been fall, but I mean, it had to, not summer or anything when the corn was growing. And I always would come up and then just drive right across, right across the field, turn around, and it's fine. You know, I might be over here one time here, yeah, but it was always usually within 50 feet. It was almost, it was a little beautiful because I, I could command this whole view. Mm -hmm. And I could, you know, and, and there was no traffic, I mean, Maybe a car would go by every 10 minutes. That's how little traffic was back then. Mm -hmm. It was all cornfield, all woods and cornfield. There was uh, no, this, the only light was at this corner. There was uh, a traffic signal there? There was a traffic signal. I, I think, it, but I think, I, I think it used to just blink. I don't think uh, it was a red and green. I think it was like a flashing, yellow. Like a flashing yellow or flashing red type thing. Okay. So they didn't have to actually come to a stop. Go back so I can research this a little better. You, you mentioned you stabbed her. Do you know for sure uh, yeah. how many times you stabbed her? Right one time. Okay. Right in the face. Oh, was definitely in the face. Because okay. she was screaming. I used to okay. She was trying, she was trying to her from screaming. And she would have been tied up in some way? At that point, I don't, I don't even know. If she might have even been loose. I might have untied her. Because we were in the car for about 10, 15 minutes before that. Because I couldn't tie that. I was, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't back out, I couldn't go forward. Right. So, and, so I didn't know what to, I, you know, I didn't want to hurt the curl of the head. You know, that, I wouldn't have done that. So, mm -hmm. and if the cop car didn't come by, I don't know what I would have done. We would, I, in fact, I was thinking the both of us get out and push the car. <laughs> I can tell you, she was dressed, and she had a suit on. She had like a suit jacket and a tie. A tie? Yeah, a tie. About how old is she? Uh, 
early 20s, I would say. Okay. Dark hair. You love dark hair. You uh, not, you know, the funny thing is, most of my victims are dark, but I like them on them. So, all right, I, I, I have something to work with on that. What kind of car? Any idea what kind of car it was? I have no idea. Okay. It, it, it was regular. I mean, it wasn't stick that I know. But uh, now, tell me about the well. How did you ever first find the well? In the beginning, I wanted to find a place to drop the body. But see, I always like to drop them near the side of the street so I can be found there easy. And most of them, you'll sign over the thing, almost all mine were. But in the beginning, I didn't think that way. But then I think, you know, I didn't want these people rotten, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got a little settlement. I say, if you drop them near the street, somebody will find them in a day or two. But I, wa I walked, I, I, I might have just got out to take the leak or something. But I, I walked back. You could walk from this field. This field was all soft. This is, I mean, there was no water, no no wood, no swamp. But when you walk back in here, if you got about 40, 50 feet, it turned to swamp. You know, where there's actually water, you know, you couldn't actually walk dry. And I was walking back there to see if I could find a place to, you know, hide a body. Were you by yourself when you first discovered it? Like you were just on like a scouting mission, or did you actually have a body in there that first time? Do you know? I had, I had a body. Okay. And uh, I had a the first time I, I seen it. I didn't know what it was. That's what it was. I walked on it, and it was tin. It was like it was like a galvanized round type, you know, like corrugated. Yeah, it was like it was like say eight foot long, ten foot long, five foot wide. So they, it was a big, yeah, it was a big piece. Because I walked on it, I realized it's a ground no more. I, and it was like metal. But it was pitch pitch black, I couldn't see what it was. I didn't have no flashlight, and I never carried a flashlight or a light or anything. The next time I came back, I was earlier. It was only about eight o'clock at night. It was still dark, but it was early. It was lighter, the water moon was out or something. So I went back to see what it was. And I seen it was a metal piece. So I moved it, and I couldn't see nothing. It was pitch black. So I dropped the rock. It went down, it sounded like 100 feet, but it went down about 20 feet, 15, 20 feet. And uh, I seen the side, the side, it was, it was like a well. It looked like, but not brick, like stone or old cinder block or something, like, like, like an old time cistern or something mm -hmm. that somebody covered up so nobody would fall in. And then I said, hey, this is a good spot. And then I, I remember the three girls that dropped in there and then, then I said, then I started thinking about them rotting in there and I, I got, I said, nah, that's why I started dropping them by the side of the streets. So this, they were, you, you only used that well for three bodies. Three. This would have been the fourth one, but she got away. I don't know if I was going to put her in there, because I, I, after those three were in there, I went back there many times, but I, I never put nobody else in there. Okay. So I, I don't know. It, was, it wasn't always planned. It was, you know, just how how things came out. You know, I don't know if if, if we would if this wasn't if this, it just looked different to me that time. I thought I might get stuck. That's why I went around the other way. I would have went back. I don't know if I would have dropped there in the well as the fourth one or not. But I brought quite a few others after that that I didn't have to back to that well. But you would go back to this field. Oh, then yeah. Would, and then oh. and then you would just go dump the body somewhere else. Right. Okay. The three the three girls that are, are in the well. Any ideas uh, to help with those? Like, do you remember them at all? No. Where they came from? How they were killed? Anything? Most of his victims were vulnerable women and prostitutes who usually wouldn't question meeting in unseen locations. One was a hooker that I picked up in the middle ferry. There was a 
hook, a, a hook and bar there in the middle of where I used to go into. And uh, I'm pretty sure. And one was a waitress. I remember she was a waitress. From where? I don't know. I don't know. Local. Local in the area, but I don't know where. I think she was she was young too, I think. I'm not sure. And the other the other girl could be a blonde from Atlantic City, but I'm not sure. I'm not, that's what I say, I'm mi i mixed up over it just sometimes it was one after the other. And then sometimes for six months I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. you know, What would have made you bring a girl from Atlantic City all the way up here? Did you go down there? Yeah, I was in Atlantic City. What would have made you bring her all the way up here? So that's where I brought them all. That's what I'm saying. So almost, almost everyone was, not all of them, right? but almost everyone was. So let's assume for a minute that you killed a girl in this field. Forget the well for a minute. You, you killed a girl in this field. What would you do then? Would you just take a dead body and put it in your car to go dump it somewhere? Well, I would, if I was in her car, I would just go to different places. You know, I've gone up to New York State. I've driven from there all the way out to the end of Long Island. How would you get back? What? How would you get back? You I would just drop the body and then come back with the car. Okay. And drop the car wherever. Sometimes it would be in my own car. But I never, I never drove my own car across there. Because I was always afraid of getting stuck. I always knew if I got stuck, I could just run. Right. I never, never took my car in there. Like I said, a lot of times I would leave it in the all the 24-hour time. It was, it was beautiful. The car could stay there forever. Right. Nobody ever know. Nobody looked for it, and I could always, I always knew. If once I get, I make it back to that diner, I'm okay. And that one on roof there had a big back parking lot. Had a little small one on the front facing the route four, but in the back was enormous, like. 70, 80 cars get fit there. It was a good, nice diamond. Good food in there. But I would always pick it. That's why nobody ever knew what was going on because I I would drive three hours out to Montauk. We were body there. Next time I'd go there, well, we're down the turnpike until I couldn't go no further to travel. We were body there. So they were never, never connected, never two or three until they were the end where I got started getting stupid. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think, what, what year is the first, do you think? Do you have it in your head or you have no idea? Well, I can knock it down to one or two years. What do you think? How far back? 67. 60, maybe the end of 66. 67. A lot of years of running around. A lot of states still. Yeah. Do you have any? Do you have a number in your head that you think? Did you ever, did you ever sit back and think about it? It's sad to say I, I couldn't count that high. They, they, they start to get jumbled. I would say it's well over 80. You think that many? Well over. Yeah. I done some in Florida, Connecticut, lot New York, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Baltimore. Uh, any place within driving distance that was not connected to me, I would try. Uh, my whole thing was not to make a pattern, which I never did. Not and never to try to kill them the exact same way or to, you know, leave a signature, you know. I was I wasn't stupid, you know, and other than that one time in Hackensack where just luck, I would have been caught there. Right. Mm -hmm. I was never even, even close to getting caught. Other than that one time. Did you end up dumping that girl after that cop stopped you? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't even remember who she was. But I was coming back from Montreal at the time. And that's what it was at. I was coming back coming down River Road. I was during the day too. And I never really did anything during the day, but it was like eleven o'clock in the morning. 
So I can remember certain little facts about everything until I start thinking them, you know. Mm -hmm. Every once then something stuff might pop in. And what, but a lot of run, a lot, a lot of runaways. See, a lot, of, a lot of the girls were hitchhikers, mm -hmm. runaways. There's a lot of hitchhikers back then too. Oh, everybody hitchhiked. You know, every, every day going to work, I get, I get, I used to get more rides. Let's see, that was the thing with me. I, I wasn't. I wasn't a serial killer. It, it, no, it's, you just told me you think you killed eight, over eight. Yeah. That, that fits the definition pretty well. No, it doesn't. But I know what you said, because you've told me in the past, there's been many more that you let go. Hundreds. Yeah. In other words, I didn't go out to kill somebody. M most anyone I killed was when I would be somehow connected to them, and I didn't want to get caught. It was more than just not getting caught. I uh, you know, just thinking about myself. What do you mean connected? Meaning like somebody might have seen her get well, like car the, or... Yeah, like in the Bergen Mall. You know, I walked around the mall. I walked in the park and I walked, followed her into the park and I anybody could have sit in. In his eyes, he had killed over a hundred women but did not see himself as a serial killer. Me, in my mind, I don't know if anybody's seen me. Mm -hmm. You know, that to me, you know... Like I tell you, one time in Atlantic City, I met a girl in, in, in the... Uh, in the uh, in resorts, she went with me, and I brought her back up here. In my mind, hey, I could be on a camera down there or whatever. So those were the ones I couldn't leave. But if if the girl wasn't dangerous to me, I never I, ne I never went out to kill. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't say I said I'm not really like a standard serial killer. I didn't I didn't get it no enjoyment of its own way, and that's the truth. Never had no joy. It was very hard. So what was the thrill? Was it more rape? Control? Tying no, up? It was the game. It was being able to get away with it. The stalking. The, the, to be able to... To be able to do it, it was like the perfect murder every time. You'd see something in the paper, a body was trying to hit, you never heard of it because there was never nothing after that. You know, no cops ever came around me or stiffed the rain like, like you see on TV. Mm -hmm. It was getting away with it. And uh, even a lot of times, it, it was control. But I mean, my husband didn't even have sex. He claims he wasn't a serial killer due to not taking pleasure from the killings themselves, but the enjoyment came from getting away with it. Sometimes. It was more... The, I used to say the hardest... See, I, when I was doing the hookers, the hardest thing in the world is to be the hooker. And what I mean, be the hooker. Mm -hmm. Right. The out hustle, because they are sharp. You don't understand that, because you never was in the, if you would have seen New York City hookers in the 60s, they were sharp. And they would never do anything, ever, until you paid them first. I mean, it was like religion. But I would get them so greedy by showing so much money. I would I would show them a wide like thousand, twelve hundred dollars. Their eyes would go crazy, and I'd appear. I I always appeared innocent, naive, green. I I played that act like I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I I got afraid around them. You know, we're gonna get caught or all this stuff. So in their mind, they're gonna rob me. And it was the game to get, most times we went out drinking, I'd, I'd get him drinking, get him drunk, get him in a room, have all the sex, and what, never paid him. And that's, that was the majority of the thing, that to beat them out of their money, because they were going to try to beat me out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had cases, I had a case right here, right on Route 46. I had a girl in there, she was so greedy, she took my, she, she was naked from the, from the waist up, she grabbed my pants and ran out of the room with my pants and left her, her shirt behind. And she runs right into to a guy next door. He opened his door. He heard the noise. Thought she was stealing your wallet. Or was stealing she, she, she was. Yeah. She grabbed it. She, I, she got about eleven hundred dollars from me. So the only one that ever got away. Yeah. Got, her, got my money out of all of them. But she she did because I never thought she'd run out without clothes. Yeah. You know, so I'm pretending I'm drunk and I'm there and I'm laying there. And everything. Man, she made a beeline for that talk. That's classic. Oh, I can tell you stories. Sir. 
But that was mainly what it was. And then if there was no harm done other than just beating them. I mean, I've had pimps chase. I also got a pimp as a buddy, too. <laughs> like I didn't tell you his nickname, Lucky. He came after me one time. I'm driving up 3rd Avenue, and it must have been one of the girls that I beat out of her money. And all of a sudden, a car pulls up next to me, and the girl's pointing at me to him. So he starts chasing me. So I'm, ru I'm running down 3rd, I'm in the car, I'm just driving down 3rd Avenue, not knowing why, and he starts showing a gun. I, I almost passed, I mean, I never carried a gun. I got up to 34th, I got away from him. <clears throat> I went through red lights and everything. I come back to the same area where I picked her up. I see her with the same guy. So I'm watching for her. See, I used to watch the cops. I, in fact, Lamel Taylor, if you ever talked to her, you know, yeah. we used to sit for hours watching the vice cops pick up all the vice girls to see how they do it, mm. how they sit. One cop here, the one cop here. We followed them all the way down to with central booking, where they took them, what door they went in, what door we came, they came out. One time they, they arrested her. They stopped in a uh, deli to get all the girls. They wanted coffee, so they brought the girl there. I walked in the deli. And then I'm going and she, she's arrested now, right? Yeah. Now I'm trying to figure out how I can get her out of the deli. But I, you know, will the cops chase me, leave the other girls, or whatever? Well, we had some time. I mean, it was exciting. I still an awful lot of figure this one out. Well, look, well, look. I think the only way is if there's a record in, in, in the crime. I swear, last time we talked about this, Rich, that I, I went down that road. I don't know if you're right with your years, maybe last time we talked, it was in the 60s, I didn't make them check late enough, I don't remember. The, the only reason I say... I had Montville go way back because Montville's a small town. There's they, not that, you know. But if it was, it wouldn't. It would be the very early 70s or late 60s. And I and I didn't move into Ledgewood Terrace in Little Ferry until May of 70. And if I was driving back that way, if I was living in the river, I wouldn't have been driving back that way. So, and or I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have been parked. Because I, I, like I said, I walked always to Westwood, and then I got a bus in Westwood that took me to Route 4. And then I, I walked along Route 4 to get to that diner. And I don't think I would have been down in that diner if I lived up in Riverville. Okay. So I think I, I was pro probably 70 or 71, 72. Nothing says, even if I was able to find it, yeah. nothing says that it's yeah. not developed all over that I know it's probably impossible or that obviously we would even we have no you know who knows how we would even identify anybody in it I don't even know but obviously I'd like to find it because we would like to put these three girls to rest somewhere but that would hit the papers that's what scares me that, that you couldn't cover that one up if they found the bodies now no but that doesn't that, that doesn't mean that it's you that hit the papers unless no. you decided to accept responsibility but people they have to have it out. You know, I thought it was stupid, and they asked, how, how did you know it was located over there? You know, you know reporters aren't stupid either, you know. <laughs> and it's, it's a tall order trying to find this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I knew last time when we drove you up there that it's just changed so much that it was not, never going to work. Mm. But we'll try it. I'll try it again. The, um, the, the girl that you told me about that looks like that actress, Sherry Athlete, right? Do you remember the stuff that you told me? No. Uh, like, I remember. I remember. I don't want to feed it to you. Because no. I, I want to hear your, what you remember about it. I don't remember. You had, you had good detail on it. You really did. I remember there was a girl that the name of the picture was Roswell. Yeah. That's the name of the picture she was in. And every time I watched that picture, it reminded me of that girl. Correct. It looked exactly like her for some reason. Exactly what you told me. I don't know. That, that, that I remember. I gotta play it back in my head. Do you remember you told me you followed her from a store in Hackensack? In Sears. Sears. Yeah. Sears. Sears and Rose. Stop. Sears and Rose. Does that bring? Does that bring it back? No, I didn't follow her from a stop. I I met her in Sears. Okay. I seen that she was buying something. She bought something in Sears. She purchased something in Sears and a scarf or something like that. 
and I followed her out of the store. And she walked down Main Street towards the movie theaters down there. I fought, I was walking behind her, seeing where she was going. And she stopped at one of the stores. either right before the movies or right after the movies. I was looking in the window and I went up next to her and I started talking to her. And I tried, I was trying to get her to go to, if she wanted to go to a movie. And she said, no, she had to be home by 10 o'clock or something like that. So I'm trying to figure out. Cottingham was looking for victims at all times. There are maybe hundreds of women who escaped not knowing he was a serial killer. To get her for some drinks to get some liquor into her or whatever like that. That was right, that was right by the movie theaters. How did you get it? I, I, I told her, I asked her, I got her to agree to go for one drink. You remember how old she was? Uh, I, I think at, I don't know how old I was at the time. I don't know what year it was, but I think she was pretty close to my age. She was, we were, you know, I think the early 20s, if I'm not mistaken. But she, she was right around my age. Okay. I think she, I think she told me she was divorced. Not sure. I think she told me she was divorced or split up with her husband or already in her early twenties. Yeah, I refer to something like that. Split up with. Or might have been a boyfriend. And I think that because we talked about something like that. I don't remember exactly now. And where'd you end up going? I got, I got her to go to the Holiday Inn in Middlebury on the circle there. And that's where I had my car parked. Did I had a walk there? No, we, we took a bus. Oh, okay. No, no, we took a cab. We, took a, we went to get a bus and, and there were no buses that were going down. I was trying to get the bus that... I used to catch a bus in Middlebury to go to New York. So the bus came from up in Hackensack, so I was trying to catch the bus that came through Hackensack that went to Little Ferry, and either it was none at that time of night, or I don't know if it was a weekend or not. I don't remember. But we wound up, we wound up taking a cab. We took a cab to the Little Ferry. The Little Ferry, oh, I, had my, I didn't tell her. Yeah, I didn't want to mention the, the Holiday Inn itself, as, mm -hmm. you know, as, as the thing, but I told her it was a nice lounge there. And I said, my car is parked there. Because that's where another place I parked my car, right next to the Valley Fair. I parked it in the, the Holiday Inn parking lot because nobody, you know, your car is anonymous. It could stay there. If I never had to come back in two days, it would still be there. And nobody would be saying, what's this car, you know? So I parked a lot of times right there. And, uh, when we went into the lounge, there was no, only like about 10 people and it was really, really empty, I remember. I thought this was good because we sat in the back. But I got the feeling she wasn't going to do nothing, you know. I, you know, I just, you know, I can tell, you know. She had two drinks. I got a second drink into her. I can tell you one thing. I, I, if they, if they have, I can tell you a last meal. I can tell you what their stomach contents would say. Pizza. You want to eat pizza there? No, no, not there. Later on, but we stopped and we got some pizza about, about 11 o'clock at night. Okay. I think in Hackensack. Mm -hmm. But that's what we want. We went for pizza later. So the lead, lead, she should have pizza in her stomach. And then where'd you go? Now I'm telling you too much. We haven't made no deal yet. We ain't you, got me, you got me we talking. Ain't anything. You got you me talking. talking. Nothing you didn't tell me on the car ride back to Trenton. I don't remember that. I gotta show you my notes. Back then I had a Blackberry. While, I, while Jimmy McMorrow was driving, you were in the backseat 
talking. I was texting my, I was uh, emailing myself on my Blackberry. Suddenly, he feels he's given up too much information and is afraid he won't be able to negotiate in the future. Bullet points of what you were saying, so I wouldn't forget the detail you were giving me. I remember that because I remember. Now I don't remember telling you about the thing, but I remember. I remember one time driving back. I said. He's recording what I was, that's what I thought you were doing. No, I was, yeah, I never recorded. He's recorded one thing. I was, I was actually I typing I said to out. myself, I'm going to shut up because he's re I was typing out. Yeah, I can see you doing something from the back. And I didn't want to forget what you were saying. Because you, you were giving a lot of detail. So wh where did you end up taking her after pizza? Where did you end up actually killing her? No, so now I'm going to leave that. We've got to still work out a deal, and we still got to we got we got to work. I understand. Before I start doing all this, well, there's no Miranda, there's no nothing. Like we're talking I know. About. Right? I want I want to see what if it matches what I have upstairs in my notes. I want to make sure that you, your your memory hasn't faded in the last four years. My memory has faded a lot. You remember her though. I remember Sherry Apple. That's how I call it. I had never heard of Sherry Apple until you told me. I never knew. I never. I never heard of the show Roswell until you told but me. That, the, the funny thing is, the show came out 10, 15 years later. Yeah. Was that I think it was in the 90s the show came out, and that's when I remember. Yeah. You know, right as soon as I seen that, I said that reminds me of that girl. But at that, at that time, I didn't know anything about Sherry Apple. Mm-hmm. Do you remember saying she was a dead ringer? Do you remember where you dumped her? Yeah. You do for sure? Town or just... Or you just think you remember just in your head you're seeing it? you gotta, you got to remember, everything was so different back then. I know. You know, it was... Even, even in... Little Ferry and Lola and Lola Woods. I mean, at night there was no lights. There was, you know, you couldn't just, you couldn't see in front of your hand half the time. Mm -hmm. You know, once you got towards Hackensack, it all got lit up. And, or toward little, you know, the circle there. But when, when you went into the, the side streets of town, there was no lights, there was no streets. All empty, you know, lots. There was, there was still farmland back then. You know, everything is, everything is, you know, Every, boundaries of different towns would blend in one into the other. You know, back then you didn't know when you went into the next town. If you didn't see the little sign entering Paramus or entering Saddleburg or entering Little Ferry or whatever, you you didn't know you were in another town. Let me put it that way. So you could be in another town ten minutes and not realize you were in that town. Right. So that's why a lot of times I can't say. I was in Paramus versus yeah, Saddleburg. Meanwhile, right. Good right. understand. It was, you could drive for 15 minutes and not have to even see a house back then sometimes. So the, what makes, the, you just said yes quickly when I asked you, do you know where you dumped her? What, what makes you say yes then? You, you just have a vision of it or do you know what street or do you know what town? I think I know pretty close to where I dropped her. Okay. I'm not sure though. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> because when I start thinking about something, then I think, well, maybe that was this one. Right. You know, maybe. Like I said, I just, now I just remember she had we had the pizza. Uh, you know, little things like that. You know, just for some reason I remember. Right. But that, you know, I. That, well, where do you think you dumped her? Well, well, now I'm going to keep that. I'll tell you if you're wrong about that. <laughs> We're gonna... I think I dumped her in a river for a stream. Okay. Any idea what that is? I'm not sure if she went in the water or not. It was too dark. Okay. I heard a little water. I looked down. I couldn't see if she went in the water. I couldn't even see her. Mm -hmm. I went down a, a steep. Several of his victims were found near or in water. An eight foot drop. It's very sharp. And uh, the only thing I'll say is 
It was below Hackensack. If you went down Essex Street, it would say if you got out of Hackensack. Do you remember how she was killed? Probably as sophisticated. Probably. But that's how I did most of mine. Right. You don't, do you remember specifically with her? No. Okay. So you're just kind of guessing because no, you're going, you're going, uh, I'm saying you're front, when you're I going on a of averages. Yeah, I mean, she, I know she wasn't shot. I didn't, right. you know. Yeah, no, I know that. You know, things like that, you know. Well, like the, the girl up here, but, like the girl up here you stabbed, which is not, you know, not your... That was very unique, and that's only because I panicked. I, I didn't intend it. And, it, and it, it, was, it was a steak knife. That, 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 it was a steak knife, and the knife broke. That's another fact. If you find it, the incident, you'll see. Okay. Then it wasn't even it wasn't a, a regular knife like a, a guy. It was a steak knife from one of the places we stopped at. Mm. That took steak knife. If I told you that that girl, the, the girl that I'm thinking of, was stabbed, not to death, but stabbed one time, did that bring back any memory? Not, it did, was not by any means what killed her. See, possibly. See, I used to always fuck around with a knife with them. You know, that's why I always put the little marks on them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'd stab them, just a, never stab them, stab them like, but just puncture them sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that could be possible, but it wouldn't have been like a five inch stab wound or anything like that. I would remember that. Uh, that But you also got to remember, some, a lot of times I was drunk out of my mind. Too. Right. So you might not remember, too. Yeah. You know, you know, or remember different, you, you know. Yeah. No, I, you know, I don't sit there and think about these things. I try not to even think about these things. Well, Rich, so many things, too. Uh, um, you're thinking of, like, if you were to give me everything you got, that somehow I'm going to put it put it to dozens of murders all over the place. You see the, 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 the lack of detail you have on, on a lot of these things, and even some of the detail, like you said, you think is with one, it might belong to another one. And I'm being honest. And I mean, it's easier to think, or maybe not be, this might not be as successful as you, as you think it would be, in terms of what I, my successful meaning on my end. Um, and that's why I project for so much detail, because that's about the only way you, that you could figure out one case from another. I told you in the very, very beginning, most of the detail is not going to be detail. Yeah, most of the detail is be, I dropped this body off at Roadmark, so so on the Jersey Turnpike. Mm -hmm. And you look up and you'll find a body was dropped there. But now, for me to tell you what girl it was, I can't remember. The one I dropped, I dropped off way out in Long Island. I remember driving out there. I remember I could go to the street, go down there, I went there, I turned the car, and I, I, there was a fence there, and I threw over the fence. But to tell you, hey, hey, was it the one I got hitchhiking over here in Paramus, so was it, you know, until I know more facts, or I see a picture, or something distinctive, or something, I, you know, there was just too many. I, I just don't remember. He rarely kept track of any of the women's names and didn't even know the names of a lot of them. I can tell you how I always did these things, but, you know... See, you might think that the number I threw out 80 is being a lot. But for every one that I killed, i had done this to 30 other girls. Mm -hmm. For every one, hundreds. I was out there every night, like an animal. And most, like I said, I didn't kill everything. So I have those pictures in my mind too. I remember funny things and it's, and it's, oh no, that she's still there. She's still walking around or whatever. Like a no, you know. Lanelle was with me for like three months. Yeah. You know, I didn't kill her. You know? I think longer than that. Was it? I think longer, yeah. That's all we were sorry. Yeah. Down in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. But yet, I'll remember, I remember her last name was Ziegler. Now, how, how do I remember? I just remember. Yeah. I remember sitting out in front of her, she took me to her house in Teaneck. We sat out and looked at her family's house. I remember that. But I don't remember ever hitting her. 
ever. I think she was lying there because I just didn't. And then you got to remember, I had regular girlfriends. <laughs> you know, I was juggling a girlfriend here, my wife here, girlfriend here, Nanelle was here, you know. I'd go from one to, I mean, it was it was a comedy. Mm -hmm. I'd leave work at 11, I'd go up and I'd pick Jean Connolly up at Montefiore Hospital. I'd take her down to one of the bars, Flanagan's or something. We'd spend till 2 o'clock, take her back and then go over to Barbara Lucas's house. Spend an hour or two there, then I'd drop by Linnell, and then I'd go home, and I'd be home by 5, 5.30. Mm -hmm. And this was a constant thing. And before all that, I'd go out scouting the hookage, you know, all the strolls and everything, you know, and if something popped up there, then it was a thing of chance. What, what made you on certain nights say, go see your girlfriend versus end up going out and, and looking to rape somebody? Is there, was there anything that triggered it? Like, what made you want to hunt on a certain I night? I didn't ever say I'm going to go out and rape somebody. I, I very rarely raped anybody. Well, what made you, like, let's say, what, what would make you go scout looking for to, to hurt a girl? Versus, what, I, is there anything that happened during the day? Like, is there something you can look back on and go, you know what? You're trying to be a psychologist. I'm just interested. I'm actually uh, intrigued. Um, because that, when you brought up the girlfriends you had and the things that kept you busy, it was like, what then What, what then did you end up being, what, what happened, like, on a certain day versus that would make you be like, I want to do this tonight versus I'm going to go by Barbara Lucas' house or I'm going to go over here? I was an animal. Uh, so you can't point to some particular no, thing that was like, on the, on, the, on the days that I did no, this, I would get I, mad at somebody or I'd be... Uh, no, not that. I went scouting hookers every day, seven days a week, 10 years, 15 years, every day. If I went to pick up my car, that's how I met her now. I went to pick up my car, had it on 9th Avenue and 42nd Street, and she was right in Times Square. And I just walked out and talked to her, and I got her to come back and wait outside my job until I got off work. Mm. Things just like that, you know. But I was always looking for, for an opportunity or... I guess that's what I'm saying. It was so... I just had the knack I could pick up women. I, I just... I don't know what it was. I'm not a great looking guy. Or, I don't know what it was, but I could walk a block. I can see a girl walking down a block and within the block know if I could get her into a motel room or something. You know, I'd go out for Baskin Robbins. I'd go out for Baskin Robbins and pick up a girl just right on the street between my job and Baskin Robbins, which is only two blocks, mm -hmm. and have her come sit in my car and wait for me for three, four hours until I got off work. And then, you know, things would happen. But every time when I got off work at 11 o'clock, I'd go one of the scrolls was pretty close to my work, and I'd always go down there. I'd, I'd make my little routine loose. I'd see. I'd always look for new girls. You know, the old, a lot of the old, old time girls never paid attention to me because they know I didn't spend no money with them. Mm. You know, so you know, I never spent a dime. Actually, I, yeah, that was my truth. But then by twelve o'clock, I'd have to be up at the hospital, and then I'd come down. I'd be in the bars, you know. But this was seven nights a week. I drank seven nights a week. I went out with these girls every night. Mm. Cottingham was married with three children, but as his wife became suspicious of his long absences, she filed for divorce. I did that to my poor wife. No. She didn't have a clue. No, well, probably better. They never do, but it's probably better than she didn't. Probably better she didn't. Well, she thought I was shaking on her. Right. You know, she, she always accused me of that because, I mean, I never came home at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning and I come home drunk every night. Yeah. And I worked seven. Now, the thing, too, I worked seven. I went to work two years straight when I had a day off. Christmas, we had, I was making so much. That's why I always had money. I was making so much money. I started working $57 a week there. And my first year, I made over $7,000. It was like $5,000 in overtime and $2,000 regular pay. We didn't even have to ask for all the time. We just sign sign your name on any shift you wanted to work. Seven days away, the machines never stopped. That's great. Uh, but if see if I never worked shift work, I'd have never gotten in trouble. I was getting off work at eleven o'clock. When I first got married, I'd go home. You know, my wife she worked, so she's asleep already. I'd sit 
sit there and do it alone. So I started going out to the bar and started partying. And, and what happens in New York, everything opens up at midnight. When did you start working at? Working where? And in New York. That was what year? 64. Oh, that early? Yeah. You were driving and I taking the bus. Very young man. Well, in 64, I worked for MetLife. I was driving it. That must have been 17. 64, 46, 56, 17, yeah. And I worked for MetLife for two years, then I went over to Blue Cross. But I always worked the shift work in Blue Cross. And you get out of work at 11 o'clock in New York City, all the nurses from all the hospitals get off work at the same time. And all the cops get off work in the fire room. So the bars, bars are empty at 10 o'clock and 11 to 12 o'clock. They just fell out. 200 up. people come in. Now I can stay out all night. So if that was one of the reasons I could pick up these broads. I could stay and drink all night long. And I had money to spend. Mm -hmm. You sleep during the day like you do now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I never, I never needed money. I'd go home at 5 o'clock, 5.30. And by seven I was up. I never, I never needed that much sleep. I wasn't a guy that needed. I never slept eight hours. I don't think in my life. Now I don't sleep more than an hour at a time. I sleep five or six times. Mm. But the city is, you know. If I didn't work shifts, I would never. I don't think I would have ever done anything. And the drinking didn't help. No, I don't blame anything on the drinking, but... No, listen, you obviously, you know, you had been you. There was some, there was... Well, if... If I was the type like you, I'm only assuming because I don't know how you drink, but a normal person where after four or five drinks I was loaded, then I couldn't have done nothing. But I can go in, yeah. I can go in and, and drink 15, 20 drinks and then be completely normal. I mean, go out driving around, driving all over the city, you know, I had one accident on the George Washington Turnpike, George Washington Bridge. But many nights I never know how I got home. I don't, I, you know, I don't know if I took the bridge home or the tunnel. I can never remember. Mm. But I, I was always, I beat a ticket right here in Hackensack because I was going 95 miles an hour. And the judge felt sorry for me. He says, any man that drives 95 miles an hour can't be that drunk. And I, was, I hit the thing, the person I had at 1.0, right on the nose. So it could have went either way at that time. I don't know if it's slower now. But it, it, one point, one, it was 1.0. Yeah, it's 0 .08 now. So we found me in it. The cop got crazy, went crazy. Went crazy. But I could drive. I could I never had an accident, you know, other than the one time. Hmm. So what, what do you think is going to help you to put detail to some of these things? I mean, I don't, I don't want to like show you pictures or I don't want to, you know, it's really, it's really just talking about it to me it seems like detail comes back to you. I mean, you had a lot of detail on the, the Vogel, the Nancy Vogel one, the, the one that we got. Like what made that one stick in your head so I much? I tell you, because I went out with her. She, I hate to say it, she was a slut. And I don't want to, you know, she's dead yeah. now and everything. I mean, she was a nice woman. But she was very unhappy. She picked me up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went out with her about four or five times. Yeah, you know, we had drinks right now. How are they in there? Because she used to go to the Valley Fair. And we go over into the Valley and today, how are they in? Because that place it was anonymous. She'd go into that lounge. It was never empty, full. It was always empty. And you could stay by yourself in a corner booth. But I didn't have really that. I didn't remember. I remember basically where I dropped it. That, that's what I remember in most of them. Like I say, you know. See, there's also cases. That if I tell you the truth, you'll think I'm lying. Like what? What does that mean? I think I told you once before that. I, just by luck, well, just by happenstance, 
You can kill somebody one way and it will appear to be a different way. And some of the people that you will say were assisticated weren't assisticated. I can't, I never can pronounce that word. Asphyxiated. Asphyxiated. I can't say it. I don't know why I can't say that word. Strangled, choked, whatever. <laughs> Smothered. But, and I'll say, and if I tell you the truth how they really were killed, you're going to say, full of shit. Because the death certificate is going to say a different way. Okay. So how would they be killed then? They would drown. How? How would a drowning not look like a drowning? Because if you drop a body in the summer, in the heat, all the water must evaporate from the body, if the body is not found right away. So now there's no water in the lungs or anything anymore. And, it, and the only reason I heard it, I read it, you know, some reports in papers, a couple of times, this girl was sophisticated, and I didn't know. And I really, they didn't realize they were drowned. I can't speak. I can't speak to how like, how exact the science of I don't know. Uh, of it, uh, autopsies were back in the sixties or seventies. You know, so I, I bet you even now they couldn't tell. Yeah, I don't know if that's because true or not. You leave a body out where it's, it starts to decay. You know, after two or three days, you can't tell it was it was drowned because there's no water in the lungs. The lungs, everything's collapsed already. We don't have that, well, at least here in Bergen County, we don't really have that many uh, no. decaying bodies like that, no. or unsolved, I should say. My, not, not many of our cold cases have anything to do with decaying bodies. So I don't know that that's the case of anything that's here in Bergen. I can't speak to any other the other counties. Well, I can tell you for a fact, it is here in Bergen. I don't remember yes. any of them that are, no. uh, certainly not. Cottingham made a weird statement claiming some of his victims didn't die the way the coroner said they did. There's well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just using that word, but I'm saying if, if it's, in the summer, and it's, it's left in the heat, I'm assuming what happens is all the water dries up. So there is no water in the lungs hmm. that would determine, and it would be the farthest thing you would think somebody's, you find them in a lot, you wouldn't ever even think about drowning. What would make you drown somebody and then bring them back in the car? Why would you leave them in the water? Because they weren't drowning. <laughs> <laughs> or a bathtub, whatever, right? So oh, well, you got to get about a bathtub, don't you? Yeah, I guess it depends where you are. Right. Like I said, I, I did things in all different ways. But I told you that in the very beginning. You did tell me that. I remember. You did tell me that in the very beginning. Because I always said, you know, this is the perfect murder. I mean, they can't tell, obviously. And then, you know, I, when I thought about it, I said, well, you know, the heat. It dries everything up, the body's all dry. Why would you think somebody's drowned? The only way to tell is water in the lungs. So if it's, you know, the lungs are clapped, you think just smothered. Hmm. And there are cases right here. Well, you have to enlighten me, then, so I can look at them. That's not the why. You have to enlighten me, because I, I don't know that I believe. But, that, that, but that's what I know. But that's that's why I'm saying that if I if I tell you the truth, you'll think I'm lying. So I can tell you a lie, and you'll think I'm telling the truth. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I, got, I need you to tell me what you remember. That's all. I mean, and if it marries up to something, it marries up to something. If it doesn't, then uh, then it doesn't. Or you know. You know. No. So what do you think? What do you, what do you, when you, you keep saying when we come to an agreement, what, what is it in the agreement? That, what, is, what does that mean? Tell me what that means in your mind. Besides the obvious that I know already, which is you're looking for it not to get back to you. Well, that, that's the, the main thing. But we got to talk what I'm going to get out of it. The, you know, the satisfaction of righting a wrong. No, That's I'm what not, you I'm get not, out of it. I, 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 I think I'm you're not, almost at that point. Uh, what do you want for dinner tonight? Let's start with the simple. What do we, what do we eat tonight? We're getting, we're getting off track here. Go ahead. What, what, is, what, is it, what are you thinking for dinner tonight? What kind of food? I really don't know. Any, no. Nothing striking your fancy at the moment? Everything. Nothing. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like... I don't need anything expensive, you know. I no, I, I, well, that's good because I didn't really want to splurge on you because you haven't given me anything. Good. 
Kentucky Fried Chicken would be good. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't eat that. Really? No, no, I'm not joining the Kentucky Fried Chicken. No. Me no, What else? No, you, you make some suggestions. Uh, I don't think it's wrong. Uh, I got to take the lead. Excuse me. This is the worst diagram I've ever seen. I thought you were supposed to be such a good drawer. He made me a great Christmas drawer. I can't, I can't even pick up anything anymore. He was convicted for several murders and will serve life sentences consecutively. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear the full story of the Times Square killer. And don't forget to subscribe to The Crime House for more late night listens.